Good evening, you all. Welcome to our Glory Globe TV. Here's breaking news. Yes, it's over a week that France has literally been burning. The killing of a 17-year-old boy of Algerian and Moroccan descent by a policeman at a traffic stop in Paris, Subab is being used as an excuse by a determined immigrant minority to set ablaze the country that has offered them shelter. Living in its wake, troubling questions about the future of France and the resulting deep sense of insecurity among large sections of its original population of whites, hapless victims of senseless orgy of violence. From Paris to Marseille and Lille to Lyon, rampaging mobs have gone berserk. They have raided police station ransacked shopping malls, looted buildings and commercial establishment, vandalized public property, set ablaze countless automobiles and hurled explosives at authorities. The current destruction spree being witnessed in France is not merely born out of outrage against what some would term as a cold blood murder of a young man by a heartless racist policeman. It is a part of a war against the liberal values France represent. Here are the facts. Nahal, the victim of alleged police brutality, was the only child of Mounia. She and Nahal's father divorced when he was a toddler and she brought him up on her own. Most of accounts of this Mayhem in the global media have painted Nahal as an innocent vulnerable kid and the policeman who shoot him dead and ogre. Contrary to the manufactured perception, Nahal was a difficult child. He went to the college Jean Parin, a technical school, had discipline problems, open skipped class. Notwithstanding claims by Nahal's family that he did not have a criminal record, he did have the share of run-ins with the law, according to available information gleaned from responsible French and English media. Just 17, Nahal had over a dozen cases against him, including minor drug-related offenses and driving without a license and one false plates. The most recent was last weekend when he had refused to stop for a police check. He was due to appear before a juvenile court in September. These are verifiable facts. He obviously had an impressive criminal record for someone still in the touching distance of adulthood. Surely Nahal was not one of those subdued youths wait down by unfortunate circumstances but a habitual impulsive offender. Sons any respect for law or fear of the system according to reliable media reports on Tuesday, June 27 morning, Nahal was at the wheel of a high performance Mercedes A class AMG driving through Nantere with two friends. None knows from where had got hold the car, which had police number plates. An unmissable canary yellow, the car was reportedly spotted at about 7.55 am by two police motorcyclists as it was speeding along a bus lane. They gave chase, putting on the flashing lights and banging on the diver's window when Nahal stopped at a traffic light, he drove up while the signal was still red. The two motorcyclists continued the chase and at 8.16 am radioed colleagues to warn them of the situation. A few moments later, the Mercedes was forced to stop after getting stuck in a traffic jam and the two officers dismounted, drew their guns and came alongside the car. Moments later, a 38-year-old policeman fired once at the teenager, hitting him in the chest. Why the policeman fired is a matter of dispute. His lawyer, Laurent Frank Leonard, claimed in a long television interview that his client had been leaning on the bonnet of the car when it suddenly lurched and lurched forward 
so unable to spring out of the way because of a wall running along the pavement just one and a half feet behind him he then fired his gun linear maintained that the officer had aimed at nahal's leg but the barrel was pushed up by the vehicle's forward motion bendazifor glory globe tv delhi india